Two Girls, One Pod. It's Evie Jones, as always. Do you love the solo apps? Let me know what you're thinking because I love it when I hear from you. I really do. Ask my manager. No. Ask my producer. I send her screenshots. I hope you don't mind. I love your feedback and I do love to share it with my other team member who, you know, works just as hard, if not harder than me on this show. So um, we really do love it when we hear what you think, what you want me to talk about. You know, we're always thanking, thanking and dranking. (laughs) Who came up with that? You know what? It's a bit of an appropriation, I have to say. Thank and drank and like it's black people, Americans say that. Got to stop trying to talk like a black person. What do you think about that? I mean, is it too far? I don't think so. I don't think it's too politically incorrect to say, let's not try to appropriate uh, other people's cultures and make them our own voices and the way we speak because it's not, is it? We have our own. You know, let's cultivate that. Or you can just be Lucinda and, you know, talk about everything in a sexy voice. Hey? She had a, a kiss with Timothy last night at the dinner. Not bad, not bad. I did get a DM and this is from Hazel. It was a sad one. Hi, Evie, I just wanted to reach out as I've just lost my little dog, Pete. Oh, that's what my Annie Potatoes dog's name is. And it's such a great name. I'm really struggling and I wanted to ask if you had any words of wisdom to help deal with the loss. Thanks so much. Oh, Hazel. People say this all the time. It is truly harder sometimes to lose your pet, especially a dog, because dogs, you know, they were domesticated specifically for us. They are called man's best friend for a reason. There is no love like you will get from a dog. So when you lose them, and we lose them so early because they just don't live long enough, it is a loss that is so profound and painful that you really feel quite lonely in unless like Hazel has, you reach out to another dog lover who really gets it. There are a lot of us around, but there are so many more who don't understand just what losing your best mate in that sense. You know, those eyes that would look at you like, oh, you are truly everything plus to them and more. Like they could not look at you in a more loving, there is no eyes that can do that like a dog's eyes can. And a cat can do it as well. I think a lot of species can do it, but dogs, they're right up there, aren't they? They are right up at the top. All the advice I have is to take time. I think the hardest thing is when you lose your dog is the come home and the bowls and the beds I have others. God, it just gets me just remembering coming home and thinking of people who are on their own who have to come home and see, you know, to an empty house and they're not, you're not ready yet to have a new mate. You haven't gotten over your old mate yet, but your house is empty. It's just you again. You don't know whether to get rid of those bowls yet. You don't know whether to move the beds. You don't want to do any of that. So take your time and go gentle. Talk to your friends. Talk to your family, people that you really trust and will, you know, be there for you because don't talk to anyone that's going to dismiss you because you know who they are. And just take your time. I think a lot of people say, I can't do this again. And then you can you'll find a time and it's not now. It might be now. Maybe it is. I don't know. But you'll know when it's time to get another best mate. And that's the only beauty we have of these dogs living such short lives is we get the chance to have so many of them. How wonderful is that? But for now, rest in power, Pete. 
breast little buddy you're over the rainbow bridge and he's going to be there waiting for you hazel oh my god he'll be so excited when he sees you again but he'll be watching over you for now so you know you just take care of yourself right now if it gets too much psychology really helps um i find a specific treatment called emdr eye movement distraction or repetition or something it's very very good and it's studied and it is proven results to help you move on from grief help you move on from anything that is in your way if if that's happening if that's happening to anyone where you cannot get past a specific block in your life emdr is one of the best techniques that you can have i used emdr for one of my dog losses because I could not get over it. Oh, so I'm sending you my love, Hazel. I'm sending you all of my love. So we've got the old useful fact. Haven't done one in a while. This is a great one. My beautiful producer, Rachie, found this one. Isn't she good? I think she's trying to take my job. How very dare you? Well, she is the researcher in this. How very dare I do any research? Trying to take your job, Rach. What am I thinking? This is a very good one. Have you ever heard of the term crocodile tears? Of course you have. Of course you have. We accuse people of it all the time. (laughs) Especially people on maths. Oh, look at the crocodile tears on that one. Jesus, cry me a river. Oh, where's that one come from? I think that's obvious, that one. That one is would be, you're crying so much you've made a river. Cry me a river. Modern English speakers use the phrase crocodile tears to describe a display of superficial or false sorrow. Yes, it does. But the saying actually derives from a medieval belief that crocodiles shed tears tears of sadness while they killed and consumed their prey. Oh my God, what a load of bullshit. Have you ever seen a crocodile do a death roll? Yeah, I don't think they are in any way crying about it. Anyway, the myth dates back as far as the 14th century and comes from a book called The Travels of Sir John Mandeville, wildly popular upon its release. The tome recounts the brave knight's adventures during his supposed travels through Asia. Or did he or didn't he? I don't know. Um, Among its many fabrications, he fabricated everything. The book includes a description of crocodiles that notes, these serpents slay men. They're not serpents, dickhead and eat, with an E on the end, them weeping and they have no tongue. They don't, hmm, do they have a tongue? I think they do. You know what, Sir John Mandeville? You're a bit of a dickhead. While factually incorrect, Mandeville's account of weeping reptiles, serpents, later found its way into the works of Shakespeare. And crocodile tears became an idiom as early as the 16th century. See, this is how it happens, people. This is what happens. You start talking a little bit of a fabrication, all of a sudden, Willie is all over it. Willie is all over it, pops him in a sonnet, pops it in a, in a play, and now we're studying it still to this day. Crocodile tears. Crocodiles and alligators, they're amazing. The oldest animals in the world. They are like dinosaurs, so they're still around. When I was just up in the Northern Territory in June last year, we got so close to them in the wild. That is very different to going to Australia Zoo. Let me tell you right now. It is very different when you don't know when they're going to just come sidling up to the side of 
your boat. And I kept hanging my hand over and then not and remembering. And every time I saw anyone with their arm out, like just their elbow, you know, when you just rest just your arm, like you're in the car, I'd say, oh, put your put your arm back in. And they'd go, oh, it's not. And I'm like, mm, that's what everyone says until the death rolling, being death rolled by a bloody crocodile. And, you know, John Paul Young, what? Who? Paul Hogan isn't always going to be there with a big knife, Linda Kozlovsky. Okay? Well, I hope you all have beautiful weeks, beautiful days, beautiful hours, beautiful minutes, beautiful seconds. Okay? If you've got your period, eat some f-ing chocolate. Okay? Love you all. Talk to you on Thursday. Thursday, this Thursday, we have Tina Arena. Can you believe it? The office didn't know what hit it. I tell you, I saw people I'd never seen before in that office come out of the bloody woodwork when they knew she was coming into town. Love you. Bye. <laughs>